own innocent supporters. And so I, for New York Magazine, went out to the most popular bar in Astoria, Queens, to find the bar called Carrie's Bar, Irish Bar, full of pipe fitters and iron workers and tough Nixon supporters who were all Democrats up until then. But in 1968, you know, the little of all the country, and they were hysterical over all these anarchists and, you know, uh, anti-war people and terrorists and communists, you know, bringing down our country, and Terry Farr was where they gathered. Just so they Southern Democrats, but in New York. But in New York, yeah. yeah. So, and, and then the sign on Terry Farr for the New York Union knows was a certificate saying, um, the certificate to the no Yes. And all those guys. Nobody of the year. Nobody of the year. And these guys all felt like nobody since so Richard Nixon gave them a voice where we heard that, you know, we're again. Right. And they were, you know, they really loved this guy. And, uh, and I went and watched the board game hearing with them in that space. So I would sit on the bar and Lights in those days, and I would say, Hey guys, you want to watch that one thing? And all of a sudden, somebody would say, Turn it off! <laughs> and, turn it. and somebody would say, All right, let's hear we'll throw something at it. And they would just, they thought this was all a big show to bring down their guy, their person. And they, and they never came out. You know, the most fascinating thing about that follow up is she was just be able to follow up once later after the hearings were pretty much over. Back to the same bar, right. the same guys. And they were still there, but. <laughs> 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 uh, but they were, I'm talking about the year after, in the, you know, three months after Nixon resigned, 23% of American voters were still in support of him and thought he had been run out of office. 223? Yeah. Not that many.
you know, would consider themselves invested or shareholders. Not then, but I think they do now. They do now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gil, you brought up, you started to, uh, to tell a story that I want you to finish. Um, so, as we've been sort of talking about all, all evening, uh, certain things get remembered, certain things get forgotten. Right. Uh, and there's this thing that Nixon did that was sort of floating around um, as sort of a, I, I don't know, asterisk, no, asterisk is the wrong thing. Kind of a rumor. Yeah, a yeah, rumor, yeah, a yeah. rumor. Um, that only recently was confirmed. Uh, Starting in 2007, but very, very low level, and really only in the last few years. Ex so explain what the, what the okay. rumor was and what the truth turned out to be. Well, it turned out that uh, tapes from, or notes from Haldeman, you know, his chief uh, uh, gopher, um, came out <laughs> saying um, that Nixon directed him to, you know, just get rid of that, uh, you know, get rid of Watergate, put a monkey wrench into the peace process. Throw a monkey wrench into the peace process that had been, that was ongoing with, with Lyndon Johnson because Nixon wanted to defeat his, his rival for re-election, hum, Hubert Humphrey, and he had to do that by keeping the war going. Because as long as the war is going, you know, he still got his click and he's still the president, the strong man who's gonna take us through these terrible times. What he took us through was 10 more years of war, and maybe as many as 20,000 more casualties on our side. Do you, feel like that's, do you feel like that's been absorbed by like no. conventional wisdom? Do you, think, do you people... think, I mean, how many people know that, really know it? <laughs> a sprinkling of applause. <laughs> I wonder how long it'll take, you know, for something like that to sort of settle into its proper place. In... I don't know, but it tells us that you know, you can fool, uh, you can fool some of the people all the time for forty or fifty years. I, I happen to think that with uh, Trump, he if he gets, you know, if he if uh, they find criminal uh, activity on him, it'll be the most vulgar kind of thing. It's sort of vulgar to vulgar. It's it's, it's paying off, you know, uh, women that he slept with. Um, it won't be some big, you know, Watergate type thing. And it may take us 40 years to, for, to find out that, yeah, he really, he was on the phone with Putin all the time. <laughs> but went to the equivalent of Terry's bar of today. In and Queens. I looked it up to see what's the most popular bar in Astoria, Queens. Okay, it's called Veronica's Bar. That's the first thing you have to know. Wait a minute, a woman owns Terry's bar? She's Irish, but she's not a guy. And her daughter is the favorite bartender. And she's educated. Um, she was a bartender from out of high school for 10 years, made enough money to go to college, political science major, and she comes out and she's now getting a nursing degree. She's 32 years old and she's totally anti-Trump in Terry's old bar space, right? So I go in there and I'm talking to these guys and they're, they're like, there's, a, there's actual, you know, disparate people there. There's a Hispanic couple and there's a woman with her boyfriend. And why she goes there is because Veronica and her daughter make it safe for single women or married women to come in there. And later at night, when the old timers get really soused and start groping, she cuts right in and she says, you know, okay, Oscar, you get any closer than that? And I'm gonna call her boyfriend. She's got a really big, nasty boyfriend. <laughs> and it's fake, but it stops the guys. So it's a totally integrated bar. They have women, men. And what they talked about was, some of them were, were talked about, I love the guy, I love Trump, you know, Trump. because I'm working full time now. And then another guy will say to him, oh my God, come on. I didn't even vote this time. I voted all my life, but I'm not voting this time because I'm so sick of voting for the lesser of the two evils. And then there'll be a, a, a Bangladeshi guy and he'll say, piece of garbage. <laughs> say, Does, do you say that out loud when more of the Trump supporters are here? Yeah, I do. So they, don't, they never come to blows, but there's a real spread in this bar in you know, what used to be Archie Bunker country mm -hmm. and now is much, much more polyglot. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you write it up and I hope you Sends New York to New York magazine because 
we need an update. Well, I'm going to go back there right? on, a, on, a, on a warm night uh -huh. because the, when the doors are open, they make so much noise in there. <laughs> That, that people, you know, come and stand outside to just listen to what's going on inside because it's so entertaining. Um, thank you for sharing that. I was so excited when Gail told me that she was going back to the equivalent of Terry's bar the night before our show. So I'm glad you actually did. Um, all right, as promised, 